in class we covered most of section 2.5 so this video will finish the uh, section and so just a recap our one of our goals here is to find the zeros of a polynomial function remember that a zero is where a graph crosses the x-axis and so if you have a graph then the zeros that we're uh, looking for are these x-intercepts. And so we call these um, solutions to a function. And so um, the rest of this video is going to concentrate on how do we find these uh, points. So one of the theorems that will help us is this rational zero theorem and we use this so that we can break down the possible uh, zeros into a smaller list and we do that by taking the factors of the constant term in this case it's negative four so the factors are going to be one and four and two and we include the plus or minus as well because the negatives are also factors and then we have the factors of the leading coefficient in this case, um, 2. So the factors will be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. So we divide P divided by Q. And so here I would have 1 divided by 1, 2 divided by 1, 4 divided by 1, 1 divided by 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1. You don't have to include it twice. And 4 divided by 2 is 1. And so we create this uh, possible zero list. If you notice, there's only going to be eight numbers that um, will help us to focus on these eight numbers and find a zero in this group. Once we have a zero, then we can use synthetic division to help us find the rest. So for example, in example two, list the possible. So we don't want to find them, we just want to list any possible zeros. So the factors of the constant term the constant term being 1 is going to be 1, and the leading coefficient is 2, so my factors are 1 and 2. If I divide, then these will be my possible zeros. So if we go to the next page, here's another example. Uh, leading coefficient is 4, so these are my factors. Leading coefficient is uh, negative 3. So these are the factors for that. Divide. So 1 divided by 1 is 1. 3 divided by 1 is 3. 1 divided by 2 is a half. 3 divided by 2 is 3 halves. And 3 divided by 4 is um, 3 fourths. 1 divided by 4 is 1 fourth. So these are my possible zeros. Okay. To find the actual zeros, these are the steps that we can use. So first we list the possible zeros. We use synthetic division, and then we use the quotient to find the rest of the zeros. So the reason we use these steps is because if you notice, if you have a polynomial degree of 3 or greater, it makes it a little bit harder to factor or anything like this. And so we want to break the problem down so that at the end of the last step, it's going to be quadratic, and you can use quadratic formula, or you can try to factor so your first step here is to find the possible zeros, which we did. This is my group. And then you test them. So I usually start with 1. And I'm going to use synthetic division. So I list the, the uh, coefficients. 4, there's no x squared, so I include a 0. Negative 3 and negative 1. Bring down the 4. 1 times 4 is 4. 0 plus 4 is 4. 4 times 1 is 4. Plus negative 3 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1, negative 1 times 1 is 0. Um, so we get a 0, so that makes us happy, because that tells us that 1 is going to be a 0. Okay, so now that we have 1, we use the quotient, and to write our quotient, we always start with 1 degree less. Since we had a 3, now we're going to start with uh, 2. 
So we get 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 equals to 0. You can try to factor, or you can try to use the quadratic formula. So this polynomial can uh, be factored. So we get 2x plus 1 and 2x plus 1. So my zeros are x is equal to negative a half and x is equal to negative a half. And so if I list the zeros, we have x is negative a half, x is negative a half, and x is equal to 1. So I have three zeros. My degree was 3. So that means I found all the zeros. In this situation where you have two that are the same, we just say that this has multiplicity of 2. Okay, and the multiplicity helps us to determine if the graph is going to touch or if it's going to cross. So in this example, at 1 we have a 0, and at negative a half we have a 0. And so since this has multiplicity of 2, that means that the graph is either going to touch this way and turn, or it might touch this way and turn. So we're still not sure. All we know is that the graph is touching and turning. Um, later we'll figure out what it actually does. So let's look at example uh, 5. So here, once we get the possible zeros, we tried 1. And if we do synthetic division, we notice that the remainder was not 0. So that tells me that 1 is not a 0. You can try negative 1, but um, if we try 2, then you can see that we get a 0. And so the quotient is x squared plus 3x plus 1. So this is not factorable. So that's going to um, cause me to use the quadratic formula. And so we plug in the numbers for a, b, and c, and simplify, then our answer here would be x equals negative 3 plus or minus square root of 5 divided by 2. And so this is producing two answers here. 1 is negative 3 plus square root of 5 divided by 2, and the other is negative 3 minus square root of 5 divided by 2, and then we have x is equal to 2. So um, in class, I said we would start with example 6 after spring break. I did give you the answer, so hopefully you had a chance to um, work on that just to see if you were understanding the concepts. And so we did start part of it, so let me go ahead and write the problem over here. Uh, we did find the possible zeros. Which would have been the first step. And so if we continue here, I'm going to check 1 using synthetic division. So I list my leading coefficients. I'm sorry, my coefficients. Bring down the 2. So we get 1 times 2 is 2. Plus a negative 15 would give me negative 13. Times 1 is negative 13. And so this would give us a positive 10, times 1 is 10. Fifteen plus ten is twenty-five, times one is twenty-five. And so we get a zero. And so now we find the quotient here. This would be two x cubed minus thirteen x plus ten plus twenty-five. So notice now that this is not quadratic yet. So we can just start the process again. So we say uh, p divided by q. So the factors of the constant is 1, 5, and 25. The constant, the factors of the leading coefficient are 1 and 2. So my possible zeros is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
is going to be 1, 5, 25 divided by 1, 1 divided by 2, 5 divided by 2, and 25 divided by 2. Okay, you can start with 1 again if you like, or you can choose a different number. I'm going to choose negative 1. So we have um, 2, negative 13, 10, and 25. Break down the 2. And so you can see we get 0. So, so far we know that 1 is a 0, negative 1 is a 0. And so our next step, get the quotient. We start with x squared since the previous was a cube. And so now we can try to factor or we can use the quadratic formula. So this is your a, your b, and your c. So negative b is 15, negative 15. b squared is negative 15 minus 4 times a times c. All divided by 2 times a. Negative, negative is positive 15. So we get um, 225, negative 4 times 2 is 8, times 25 is 200. So we keep simplifying. 225 minus 200 is 25. Square root of 25 is 5. And so here we get two answers. X is 15 plus 5 divided by 4, and 15 minus 5 divided by 4. 15 plus 5 is 20, divided by 4 is 5. 15 minus 5 is 10, divided by 4 is 10 fourths, which we can simplify to 5 halves. So my zeros are x equals negative 1, x equals 1, x equals 5, and x equals 5 halves. Okay, so that was example 6. Let's go back to the handout. Example 7. We'll work on that one next. And so here, they want us to find an actual polynomial. And so before we do that, if we have a zero that is a complex number, um, then its conjugate is also going to be a zero. So if a plus b is a zero, then the conjugate, a minus b, will also be a zero. So here, they want us to find the fourth degree polynomial. And so at the end of everything, our answer should look like something like this. It will be a polynomial of, of uh, the required degree. Okay, so here it says find the fourth degree polynomial with real coefficients that has the given zeros. So what I like to do first is list my zeros. Okay, so I have x negative 1, x is equal to 5, x is equal to 3 minus 2i. Since this is a complex number, the conjugate is also going to be a 0. Next, I like to list the factors. 
So my factor here is x plus 1, x minus 5, x minus 3 plus 2i, and x minus 3 minus 2i. Since we are looking for a polynomial, I can start by writing f of x is equal to some coefficient, some leading coefficient, which we don't know yet, times each of these factors. Then we just need to multiply this out. So I'm going to start by multiplying the complex numbers first. So I have x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. x times negative 2i is negative x2i. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Negative 3 times negative 2i is positive 6i. 2i times x is 2ix. 2i times 3, negative 3 is negative 6i. And 2i times negative 2i is negative 4i squared. So it looks like we just made it worse. But in reality, it's going to make it easy because it's going to help us get rid of those um, imaginary numbers. So let's simplify. So here we end up with x squared, negative 3x, minus 3x is negative 6x a negative x2i and a positive 2i become 0. And then we have a positive 6i and a negative 6i. That becomes 0. Then we have i squared, which we can replace with a negative 1. So negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4 plus a 9 will give us 13. So now we continue to multiply. So I'm going to multiply x minus fifth, uh, 5 times this polynomial. So I'm going to end up with x times x squared is x cubed x times negative 6x is negative 6x squared, and x times 13 is 13x. Negative 5 times x squared is negative 5x squared. Negative 5 times negative 6x is positive 30x. Negative 5 times 13 is negative 65. We can um, clean it up a little bit. So we end up with x cubed. We have negative 6x squared minus 5x squared is negative 11x squared. 13x plus 30x is 43x. And we only have a constant of 65. So finally, we multiply the, the last two factors. x times x cubed is x cubed. x times negative 11 x squared is negative 11. This would be x to the fourth. And this would be x cubed. And x times 43x is 43x squared. x times negative 65 is negative 65x and now we multiply the 1 so 1 times all of this would be plus x cubed minus 11x squared plus 43x minus 65 
together your like terms. So we have, let me go ahead and write it over here. A, so we have an X to the fourth. And X cubed, we have a negative 11 X cubed and a positive X cubed. So that gives me a negative 10 X cubed, 43 X squared, minus 11 X squared is going to give me a 32 X squared, negative 65 X plus a 43x would give us a negative 22x and then we have our co our constant term 65 and so um, here in the next examples we'll be able to find a um, for this example since they don't give us enough information to find a um, we can have a uh, many possibilities. So we can just leave our answer as x to the fourth minus 10x cubed plus 32x squared minus 22x minus 65. But once we find a then we would multiply whatever number a is into the parentheses to get our polynomial. Okay so that was example um, seven. So let me go ahead and work out example 9, and I'll give you the answer for example 8 so that you can check your work. So if you're doing this correctly, your answer will be f of x equals x cubed plus 3x squared plus x plus 3. Again, uh, if you work this out and you don't get the answer, you can um, send me an email or you can log into my office hours. Okay, let's look at example 9. Find the third degree polynomial with real coefficients that has zeros of 1 and 5i, such that f of negative 1 is equal to negative 104. So first we start by writing our zeros. It is a third degree, that means we should have three zeros. Notice we have a complex number, so the conjugate will also be a zero. We can list the factors. And I'm going to write my polynomial, f of x is equal to some number a x minus 1 times x minus 5i times x plus 5i. So we can start multiplying. x times x is x squared. x times 5i is positive x5i. Negative 5i times x is negative 5ix minus 25i squared. If we simplify, we get x squared. This will become a 0 minus 25i squared. i squared can be replaced with a negative 1 times negative 25 would be positive 25. x times x squared is x cubed plus 25 x minus x squared minus 25. So I end up with x cubed minus x squared plus 25x minus 25. So now they give us some extra information here. They tell us that 
f of negative 1 is equal to negative 104. So in here, this negative 1 is our x. And so if we input negative 1 for all the x's, our result, in other words, the y value, is negative 104. This is your y value. So with that information, what I can do is I can let f of x here be negative 104 because that's going to be our output. Remember, f of x is like your y is equal to a. And anywhere I see an x, I'm going to replace it with my input of negative 1. And so essentially what we're doing is solving for a. So negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1 times negative is negative 1. 25 times negative 1 is negative 25 plus 25. Negative 1, negative 1 is 2. Negative 25 plus 25 is 0. And so I can divide by negative 2. So that tells me that a is equal to So if you notice here, I should have a negative 25, but I wrote positive 25, so this should be negative. And this is also negative. So we end up with negative 52, divide that by on both sides. So that means that my a is going to be equal to 2. Okay, so now we can finish our problem. So now we have f of x is equal to a, but for a we said it's a 2. And so we can multiply the 2 in the parentheses, so we end up with 2x cubed minus 2x squared plus 50x minus 50. And so that would be our, our polynomial, our final answer. Okay. All right, let's go with example 10. Same idea. Find the zeros given that 4i is a zero. That means that negative 4i is also a zero. And notice here that we're kind of missing um, one more zero since we have degree 3. And so the question here is to find that zero. And so you can start off doing the same um, idea if we write down the factors. Then we end up with f of x. If I multiply these two factors... Well, we can just, let me do it this way. Um, so one way is you can multiply these two factors. And it's going to give you um, a polynomial of x squared plus 16. And then you can use that along with the uh, long division. But the easier probably way to do it is to use synthetic division. Um, so I can start synthetic division with 4i. My coefficients here are 3 negative 2, 48, and negative 32. So if I bring down the 3, I get 4 times 3, 4i times 3 is 12i. 12i plus negative 2 is negative 2 plus 12i. And then I need to multiply 4i times negative 2 plus 12i. So 4i times negative 2 is negative 8i, and 4i times 12 is 48 times i squared. i squared is a negative 1, so that gives us a negative 
48. So if you notice here, um, if I add negative 8i minus 48 to 48, the 48 and the negative 48 become 0. So we're left with negative 8i. 4 times negative 8 is negative 32. And I squared, but I squared is negative 1, so that makes all of this a positive 32. Plus the negative 32 would give us a 0. And so that just reconfirms that 4i is a 0. So if I get my quotient, I get 3x squared minus, or plus, let me write it as plus, negative 2 plus 12i x minus 8i. And so this, although this is quadratic, you can um, simplify this a little bit more by using synthetic, synthetic division again. So let me use synthetic division once more. I'll write it on this side. But now I'm going to use negative 4i, my second zero. So we have um, 3, negative 2 plus 12i, and negative 8i. Bring down the 3 times negative 4i is negative 12i. And so if I add this, I'm left with negative 2. Negative 4i times negative 2 is positive 8i, which gives me a 0. So my quotient now is 3x minus 2. And so I can solve for x here. And find that third zero. So our third zero is x equals two-thirds. Okay, so that was example 10. Let's go to example uh, 12. So example 12, or well, example 11, wants us to find the factors of um, this polynomial. So I'm going to write the answer. That way you can check. your work if you try this later. Uh, this right here is just x plus 5 plus 2 square root of 2. Uh, example 11, you would work the same as example 12. So here it says write f of x equals x to the fourth plus 8x 8, 8 squared minus 9 as a product of linear factors and list all the zeros. So we need to find um, the zeros so one way we can do this is you can check if it's um, factorable. Since it's degree 4, it might be factorable. And so I'm going to check that. Either way, since we're finding the zeros, we want to let f of x equal 0. So let me try to factor this. x to the fourth would be x squared times um, x squared. Uh, to get a negative 9, that would be 1 and 9. And then we need to check the signs. Um, we want it to be negative 9, so 1 has to be positive, 1 has to be negative. So the biggest number will make it positive since the 8 is positive. So we can set each factor equal to 0. So we get here x squared is equal to 1. Take the square root on both sides. So x is equal to plus or minus 1. And here we subtract the 9. So we get negative 9. Take the square root. Plus or minus, since I have a negative 9, uh, the negative comes out as i. The square root of 9 is 3. And so if you notice here, I have four zeros. Let me list them here x equals 1, x equals negative 1, x equals 3i, x equals negative 3i. 
So I can get the factors for these. x minus 1, x plus 1, x minus 3i, x plus 3i. So what I'm doing here is um, writing this on the same side, uh, moving it over to write it as a factor. Now that we have our factors, then we just write our answer as um, a product of factors. And so this is our second uh, part of the answer. Our first one was listing all the zeros. Okay. The uh, next um, problem is discard this rule of signs, which basically tells you um, how many positive and negative uh, zeros you might have in in your uh, when you find the zeros. It's uh, only tells you that you could have them, but it doesn't really go into more details than that. So the number of positive zeros of f is either equal to the number of variations in sign or less than that number by an even um, integer. And the number of negative real zeros of f is either equal to the number of variations in f of negative x or less than that by a number by even um, integer. Okay. So a variation in sign just means that if you have a positive term here that the next one would be negative and that would be considered a change, a variation change. And so for example here if we're looking for the positive zeros, then we look at the function f of x, let me just write it down, plus x plus 8. And we have to check um, from term to term, is it changing from positive to negative or negative to positive? If you notice, these are all positive, so there's no change, so we just say that the positive, as far as positive zeros, that means that you should have um, zero positive zeros. Okay, so the variation in sign is zero. So you would have, um, when you do the problem, if you find these zeros, then this is telling us that we should have zero positive zeros. And then we can check the negative ones. But for the negative zeros, we'll have to look at f of negative x. So anywhere I see an x, I'm going to substitute it with a negative. And let me just simplify this. Negative x cubed is negative. Negative x squared is positive. Minus x plus 8. So here, we can see that from here to here, it went from negative to positive, so that's 1. And then from here, it went from positive to negative, so that's 2 changes. And negative to positive, so that's um, 3. 3 sine variations. Okay, and so what this is telling us is we could have 3 negative zeros. Or, if you notice here, it says, or less than that number by an even integer. So if I have 3, a number less than that by an even integer, if I subtract the 2, I get 1. So this is telling me that when I look for my zeros, I could have 3 or 1 negative 0. So notice it doesn't really tell you which one it is. It just says you could have 3 or 1. So that means that um, if I had 3 negative zeros, then that would be all my zeros. But if I had 1 negative 0, I would be missing 2. So more than likely, that would be two uh, complex numbers. Uh, since we have positive, zeros are going to be 0. 
And the last problem here is a word problem uh, about a bakery. And they're trying to make a cake to for this following information. And so just to give you an idea or to get you started, the volume, it says a new bakery offers decorated sheet cakes for children's birthdays. The bakery wants the volume of a small cake to be 351 cubic inches. The cake is in the shape of a rectangular solid. So your cake looks something like this. Uh, they want the length of the cake to be four inches longer than the width and the height of the cake to be one third of the width. So some information that you do need is that the volume is length times width times height. And then they tell us here that they want the length to be four inches longer than the width. So my length is going to be four inches longer than the width. I don't know what the width is, so I can just call it W. And the height should be one third of the width. So we can use um, H is one third of the width. And the width is just the width. Okay, so they also tell you that the volume is 351. So if you're looking at the formula here, you already know what V is. My length is W plus 4, my width is W, and my height is one third W. Okay, and so we're trying to figure out what the dimensions are. So in other words, we need to solve for W here. So um, we would multiply everything out on the right side and bring this number over, set this equal to 0, and then we can um, find the zeros using these methods. And so, um, if so, for my class, uh, I'm going to send you an email regarding this um, question. And so that is the end of section two point five.